Good evening, everybody. It's good to be able to be back on here and to have everybody here that's in church. And uh, we send it out to everybody and we love everybody. I've been trying to do an update every, every service on how Mama's doing. And uh, she's getting a little better day by day. Today was her first actual day of therapy. Uh, so uh, she may be tired or she may be listening and watching that. Uh, so uh, either way, we're, we're going to dedicate it to her. And, but she's, like I said, she's getting a little better every day. She's got a, a lot to do, but, but she's determined to do it. So uh, y'all just continue praying for her. Uh, how's uh, Amelia? She's doing good. She's coming home and she's on two antibiotics, but she's doing good. Well, good. I'm glad. And uh, y'all remember the Ball family, Clyde Ball? Uh, you know, it ain't been a year yet since he lost Ernie. Uh, so, uh, but remember uh, him that they found one of his sons dead, Steve. So, uh, Steve. Uh, so y'all, y'all remember that situation and. There's just a lot going on, ain't there? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm so thankful that when something goes on, that we've got a family here that we know we can contact and they'll be praying. And not only that, they'll start spreading the word and more people will be praying. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how that works and we're, we're so thankful and we love y'all so much. Daddy told me to tell y'all uh, that he appreciates all y'all and, and he loves y'all. Uh, maybe it won't be long before he's able to be back here instead of me. Y'all won't have to put up with me so much. But uh, I, I'm thankful we really do appreciate you. Well, before we get started, won't we go to the Lord Prayer to kick things off? What do y'all say? Uh, Kenneth, you want to lead us tonight, brother? Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be back in the house, God. We're very thankful for all your many blessings, Lord. May we pray, God, that there be nothing in our heart that might hinder us from our blessings tonight, Lord. Lord God, may that we all remember this is our service for you. We thank you for all that you've done, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm not sure, but let's try it in about uh, B and see what happens. I might have to adjust it. So, it's one of them lines. So. It'll have since Jesus saved and pardoned.
favorite songs, and uh, and I'm glad that I've never been sorry since Jesus saved my soul. Amen. Uh, did somebody say something? Okay. I don't. Want, I thought somebody had something they were going to say. Um, we're going to do one more old Brett Hemmel song, then we'll branch out like we normally do, and uh, we might try that the same thing. I don't know. I moved all over the place and went right back. So. Soft as the voice of the lady do, breathing the lesson anew.
Papa said you could have both of them out of his guitar case if you want them, but it ain't here tonight for you to get them. No, I don't want to. I don't want to like that. That sounds like stealing. No, he give them to you if you want them. He's no, I don't want them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what what are we doing tonight? Is that a little slow loud night?
own direction. <laughs> Storm. 
And it's no good to feel his fear. And it's no good to have his word. And it's no peaceful in the heart of my Lord. Yes, it's no peaceful in the heart. I just feel like doing this song. I know it ain't been long since we've done it, but uh, we call it Cecil's song, and I just feel like singing it. And if y'all would help me, y'all know it too. Every Bible was old. He was the last one to leave. Is this the way that it all 
we start drilling down, there's something in that precious Word of God where somebody has faced greater things and even similar things as we have uh, before. And I'm so thankful that I know that in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our troubles, God still cares. Amen. Amen. I put on there, uh, on Facebook out there, and y'all too, uh, 1 Samuel uh, 17 and 29. 1 Samuel 17 and 29. But I don't think I'm going to preach that. Uh, Lord is still in my heart to go another direction. Let's go over to Lamentations. Chapter 3. This is not what I had intended, but it is what the Lord is laying on my heart, so we'll just see how it goes, okay? Because the message that I was going to preach tonight was War of the Warriors. And uh, tonight I just feel like that this is where the Lord is leading so before I even read a verse, I want us to go to the Lord in prayer and ask that whatever He's got for us in this message, that we'll get it. Amen. And as He has sent it. Lord, we come before You as some of this we know how. We just trust in You and ask You to move as You see fit. You know our hearts. You know the struggles that we face. But God, in the midst of all those troubles, You are with us. God, we just ask that you would touch us, that you would touch every heart that's listening on Facebook, along with every uh, heart that is gathered here tonight. God, and we just give you the glory, and we just give you the praise. Help us to be open and receive what it is you want us to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Jeremiah said, and starting in verse 18, he said, and I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul st hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Go ahead and be seated. Life ain't easy. It's full of ups. It's full of downs. It's full of really high times. It's full of really low times. If somebody was to tell you that life is going to be easy, you can tell to them and say you are a liar. Because it just don't come that way. We don't know what's going to come on tomorrow. We don't know what step we're going to have to take. Tomorrow can mean, Charles, that we lose everything that we've got. Everything that we've worked for may go away, Nancy. It may just be gone. And what then? We may have health today and we may lose our health tomorrow. What then? We're not promised tomorrow will be good. It just ain't. Nowhere in the Bible are we promised that our tomorrow in this life will be good. Jeremiah had suffered many things. The book of Lamentations is, is the book of his sorrows. Uh, and, and where he was lamenting over Jerusalem because of the sin that they had done. And God had brought punishment upon them uh, because they would not turn. And that punishment came upon the just and the unjust alike. The people that were serving God still went through the punishment that the other ones wasn't. Was God with them? Yes, He was. He protected them. We hear about miraculous things, about Daniel uh, and the three Hebrew children and, and the lion's den and all the works that God did. But in the midst of things, people still suffered loss. They still lost their family. They still were suffering sickness and they were seeing the destruction of people that they cared about. And Jeremiah said, that Thou hast removed my soul far off from Peace. In other words, he's saying, my soul can't find any peace. It's so far away. I'm troubled. I'm burned down. I just don't know what to do. You 
ever made it to that point? He's saying I'm down here on the bottom and I just can't do nothing. But look up. He had seen people took it in prison that he loved. He had seen children that he had, that he had watched come up slaughtered. He had watched uh, his family uh, uh, taken captive. He'd seen them uh, from when you study it, the way that these went in. He would have seen his family raped, destroyed, and him powerless to do nothing. And in the midst, and I talked a little bit about this a couple weeks ago, in the midst of all that that's going on, the leftover religious leaders was persecuting him personally and cast him in jail and making him suffer. But yet Jeremiah still mourned for his people the things that's going on. And he said, my strength and my hope is past for me. He said, I don't see no hope. I don't feel any strength. I just don't know how to carry on. Life had not brought him where he thought life was going to take him. You ever been to that point? That life just didn't bring you where you thought it was going to bring you. You had bigger plans. You had bigger dreams. But bless God, it just didn't go that way. Then what? Then what? He said, my soul. He says, remember my affliction and my misery. The wormwood and the gall. He's talking about the bitterness. When he says the wormwood, he's talking about the bitterness and the gall. The pain, the suffering. My soul hath them still in remembrance. And it is humbled in me. He's saying I am brought down. I can't get them out of my mind. But in the midst of all that he had seen. And undoubtedly Jeremiah had suffered more things than we ever had. Sometimes we get on a pity party. And, and we feel so down and out. And, and we forget that there's people that have had it worse than we have. We forget that there's people out there that, that would, would love to just be where we're at. In the midst of our sufferings uh, and the things that we're going on, would love to just be where we're at. I've run into people that with, with Mama and the situation she's been, you know how, how stressed out it was and we, we didn't know how it was going to go. They would love to just be able to have her there in that because they have lost theirs. Yeah. Right? Amen. <clears throat> But we don't always think about other people, do we? But it, as Jeremiah is going through all this, he says in 21, and then he goes on, I want you to think about this. He's had such sorrow, such bitterness. He says, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have I hope. He just said that hope he didn't have, couldn't see hope. He didn't have peace. But when he thought about what he's about to say, then he has hope. He said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. How about that? Have you ever stopped to look around that? Uh, look upon that? In the midst of how bad it's gone. And it took a second to say, but you know it's by God's grace and His mercies that it didn't go worse. That we're not completely destroyed. Or that we have hope. Or that we have a chance at peace. He says, talking about His compassions, He goes on, He says, they are new every morning. And He says, great is thy faithfulness. What kind of faith? What kind of joy in the midst of these burdens and the sorrows and the pains that he had suffered. Here he is, he says, but great is thy mercies. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Then he goes on to say this, Wayne. You know, if we don't have nothing else, because he didn't have nothing else. If we don't have nothing else, Kenneth, we've got something. Because he goes on to say in verse 24, he says, the Lord... Is my what? Y'all reading it? What's that mean? What's a portion? Huh? 
He said, yeah, he's, he, he's, he's, your, he's supplying your need. He is your food. You're right, your portion. He says, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. He's what I need, Wayne. He's what I need to make it through. He's what I need to carry on. Bless God. Over the last few weeks, we found that out uh, completely. Because you, your hands are tied. And you can't do nothing else. But there's God. The whole time, there's God working that. He said, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. And he goes on to say, therefore will I hope in him. My hope ain't in this life, Charles. My hope ain't in how much money I can make. My hope ain't in, in, in how many people I can make like me. My hope ain't in that thing. I've got hope in Jesus. Because my hope is on this life. This life is going to end. I have time to try to make an impression for the Lord, try to see somebody get saved if I can. But when it comes down to it, this life is going to end. And I've got to make sure that I'm prepared to go to the next one. And I'm glad that I've got that hope. That I don't have to be a man miserable thinking that this hell is the only life there is. You know, there's churches out there that are, are, are teaching that we're in heaven now. No, we ain't. No, we ain't. I'm glad that God has prepared a place that I can't even imagine. It's not even becoming into my heart or my imagination what God has prepared for me. But why, Charles? I'm not worthy of it. I can't say that in Jeremiah's time when he was so low and down that I could have said the same thing at that time. I might have been bitter for a while. I might have been angry for a while. But I'm still one of his. Yeah. And Charles, for some reason, he puts up with my foolishness. He puts up with my selfishness. He puts up with my whining. And he loves me anyway. Yeah. And he is still my portion. And he is still my hope. And he has promised me that though weeping may endure for a night, joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Amen. And I'm looking for that joy. Jeremiah went on to say, now listen, he has been beaten. He has suffered many things. And he's been in and out. He's been thrown in pits. He's been brought high. He's been brought low. He's been had to run for his life. As, as his uh, own uh, people was even committing uh, uh, tyranny when was raising up. His own life was in danger. And then in, uh, in verse 25, in the midst of all that, he said, the Lord is good. Unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. Can any of y'all say that in the midst of your sorrows, God has been good? Amen. 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 Then he goes on to say this. He said, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Charles, he's saying it's good that a man believe and hope in God and wait upon Him to deliver him for God to move in the situation. How many of you are impatient and sometimes just don't wait? Amen. How many of you get there and you just give up and say, well, there ain't no way God ain't going to move. I just, I just might as well die here. Yeah. Yeah. But he's still working. And it's good for us to wait. Because he will bring us out. You know what happened to Jeremiah? After all the stuff that came upon him, he ended up getting to live out his life. God let the kings that come in treat him with love and mercies. The, the kings that were coming to the, the bring vengeance upon Israel. Nebuchadnezzar showed kindness to Jeremiah. The pagan king showed kindness to Jeremiah and said, I have him put to death. My, 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 how God works. When I was talking last week about uh, Sunday, about Psalms 23, what does he say? He says he'll prepare what? A table in the midst of what? Our enemies. Right? He 
he saw what he was taken care of. They gave him a portion at one time and fed him. They gave him a choice which two ways he could go. Look what God can do. Nancy, we may be burdened down in sorrow with things that we can't see a way out. But there ain't no maze. And there ain't no situation that God don't see the end to. So we should hope with Him. When I ask what then, that's what we should be saying. We're going to keep hoping. We're going to keep pressing on. We're going to keep going. We will not. I've got to, there's a, and, and, and Kenneth can testify of this. There's a little lady down at the rest home. And she loves to pray for people. And while I'm preaching or after in between what her thing that she's got to say is, we will not be defeated. <laughs> Amen. We are to start shouting out in the face of the devil. We will not be defeated. We're not going down. We're not laying down. We're not giving up. We're going to keep on going because we know that God is with us and He's going to guide us and He knows what's best for us. Y'all believe that? Amen. You know, you think about how Jeremiah suffered and the things that he went through. And it can be burdensome. And in America thinks that, that they're beyond the trouble that's coming. Think that they're too good. No. You, you run with people, you're going to get burned. Right? Amen. But I want you to think about something. How most of y'all know this by heart? Do you wonder if, if baby Jeremiah thought these words from what he said? <clears throat> 828 says, And we know that all things worketh together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to His purpose. Romans 828. Rose, that's hard to understand sometimes. But it says all things. It don't say some things. It says all things. In the midst of our sorrow, David, and the things that go on, we can't understand that. We can't grasp it. But we do believe it because it's what the Word says. That though we may suffer here, if we love the Lord, it's going to work good for Him. Is He worth a little suffering? Is He? Do you mean that? Look what he did for you. Jesus was ridiculed, mocked. As a child, he had to run uh, because people were coming to kill him. And as he grew up, nobody wanted to have faith with him to start with. Everybody wanted to come against him. And then after people followed him, he was persecuted, beaten, mocked, scorned, hair plucked out of his face. Beaten with a cat of nine tails and crucified on the cross. Carried the cross there at one point. They put it upon uh, 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 Simon uh, Simeon at one time, but, or Serenian, the Serenian. But then he, you know, why did he do that? We don't know. If, you know, if we didn't understand now, if you could picture anything that you wouldn't understand, is that how that worked good for the purpose until you know now. But if you were standing around as the disciples watching Jesus be crucified, and you didn't understand what was going on, you'd be like, what's going on? How can this be good? But how was it good? He brought forth salvation. Because they believe. Sometimes when we stay faithful in the midst of our trials, and in the midst of our struggles, Somebody's watching. And it's helping somebody else make it through what they're doing. But I ask you, is Jesus worth suffering? He suffered for you. Uh, I mean, are you are, 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 is, is your life too good? Are you too good to endure something for Him? No. In this life we have sorrow. In this life we have tribulation. I've said this. This is a, one of my favorite verses. But he said, be of good cheer. He said, in this life you have, in this world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Because I've overcome the world. I believe that Jeremiah knew 
when he began to think about it. You know, you read. You read where the prophet got sorrowful. You read where he lost his hope. You Or you just heard when I read it. Maybe you've never read it before. But as we just read it, you, you were beginning to kind of feel how he felt in his sorrows. But yet, all of a sudden, those sorrows begin to not look so bad. Do you think maybe Jeremiah got to thinking that this life ain't the end? He got to remember, hey, this ain't so bad. Because one of these days I'm going to move on out of here. Because I have been faithful to my Lord. See, they had to, to get uh, uh, do my works. We, we've got it by the grace of Jesus Christ and by the blood that was shed. And Jeremiah had lived a faithful life and honored God. And he knew that God had something prepared for him. But what about all those people that lost, that were lost, that died in the midst of the battle? How many of y'all know that just because somebody dies, whatever the situation is that they die, if they're lost, that don't make them saved? Amen. Amen. If they're a soldier, and I love the soldiers, and I appreciate what they're doing, but if they go out on that battlefield and give their life and they're lost, it didn't save nothing. It might have saved a life here, but it didn't save their life. Y'all understand that? There's only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus, and we better make sure that we're prepared. And we need to stop living in, in such misery and look up. I know this ain't an exciting message. The message I was going to preach is going to be pretty hard. Uh, but this is something that I just feel the Lord wouldn't let me get away from. I read these verses this morning, but I wasn't thinking on them about preaching. Or, or, or talking about them. It's just where I was at in my study. And as we were saying, God wouldn't let me get what we are studying about. There's a reason. And I know hearts are burdened. I know y'all been burdened for mom and dad and others that are sick, but there's other things that are going on. There's other things that maybe y'all ain't told people. There's things going on in your own heart, in your own life, your own worries, your own struggles, your own doubts, your own uh, discouragements, your own insecurities. God knows them. But He ain't forsaken you. Just like Jeremiah knew, in the midst of all that, he was bitter and he was hurt, but yet he remembered that God was good and that it was by His compassion that things were not worse, that He had left the remnant that He has not forgotten His people. I'm here to tell you, God ain't forgotten you. You're here for a reason. And you are not alone. And you need to remember that God loves you. And He wants to see good for you. Sometimes we don't understand the ups and downs, but bless God, if we'll hold on to Him, He's going to get us there. If you don't hold on to Him, you're going to get lost. And you're going to be run through the briar bushes, through the brambles, and you're going to end up in a mess. Amen. Because you didn't trust Him. Say, so you judge me, preacher. No, not because I don't know what you're going through. I'm telling you that you need to open up your heart and let God. Let go. Linda said this one day when I was preaching at the rest home one night after I got done. She said, yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. That's good. Let go and let God. And that's what we need to do. Is let go and let God. Those of you that are watching uh, uh, out there, y'all didn't get the scripture if you wasn't paying close attention, but it's Lamentations chapter 3. Just read it. Consider what Jeremiah is saying and what he had seen and what he had gone through. And then look at how he responds after he gets. I told you the other day, I said, sometimes I don't get my clarity instantly. Sometimes in the midst of a struggle, sometimes it's not instant. I may be praying and praying and praying and I may not get that peace, Kathy, immediately. I may have to keep going through the throne of grace. It, but you've got to be thankful. And you've got to be steadfast. It'll come. That peace, that clarity, that assurance that God is on His throne, that He's working things, it's going to come. But you have to stay dedicated. You're not alone. And He loves you. Now I don't know your hearts this evening. That's what, is where God's want me to leave it at. Is that you're not alone. And that He loves you. 
I'm going to give an invitation. I'm going to pray first and I'll play a song. And I invite everybody. Whatever you're going through. Maybe you know somebody else that's going through something. I invite you to come pray for them. This altar is not a rattlesnake. You say, well, I can pray you in my seat. Yeah, but uh, Jesus could have uh, uh, just died there in the street, I guess. But He didn't. He went all the way for you so that you could have salvation. Jesus didn't have to come at all. He could have said at home and said, well, you know, that ain't worth it. But He thought you was worth it, didn't He? And He came. So I'm going to invite everybody to pray, but I'm going to pray, then we'll get a song. Lord, we come before you as humbly as we know how. So thankful for who you are, God. And we're trying our best to be obedient to what you're laying upon our heart this evening. Lord, we're just trying to trust directly to what you're saying. God, we're asking that you'd search our hearts. Lord, that you'd forgive us of our sins. Lord, and that you'd help us find that peace that we need in you here tonight. That we'd find that encouragement that we need in you tonight. That we'd find that healing. That we'd find that direction. Whatever it is that we're searching for that's got us so tore up that we'll be able to find it. Lord, tear down the walls of, that the devil's trying to put up. The blinders. I pray that you take off the eyes that people can see your life. Lord, the doors that have been locked shut. I pray that God that you would open them here tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, cause there's power in that name. And we're just believing in that name. And we're claiming it here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Precious Lord, bigger than you, than I can die, lives almost gone. And forever I stand, got my feet on my head, take my hand. Precious Lord,
Anybody got anything they feel like they need to say? I don't know why I feel like asking that. The Lord just... Some big brother, some more hard going. You know, she walked in. Yeah. She walked in on me down at the middle one day at the, in front of the old high school. It took my soul with my old sins away. Amen. And I got saved down in front of the high school. Been saved ever since. Amen. And the Lord been good to me. Yes, he has. It's got a text down on the phone. It says, people, I'm going to tell you, look for a atomic bomb to come. Mm -hmm. Tell them let's talk about shooting a rocket over there with atomic bomb on there. Yeah. He said, be careful, be watching for it. So, I've been praying about it. <laughs> and I know when it comes, I'll go home and be with the Lord. If it does. Yep. I'd like to say that I love the Lord. Bless you, Bill. I got some good news. What I call good news today is that I'm not going to have to take you more. Amen. I want to give God praise for touching Amelia. And I know that all y'all's prayers have lived up because she was a very sick little girl. And, and I was scared to death. Amen. <laughs> but um, they thought she had sepsis. And so I was really worried when I found that out. But praise God, he's reached out and touched and he's healed that baby. And I just want to thank you and give him praise. Amen. 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 It is good to give God praise. Amen. They will get so much glory for what he does in a week. Amen. Why don't we change it and give God praise? Amen. Anybody else before we change the service? Well, all right. I'll say hello to Mama if she's getting watch. I all want to say hello. 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 And we love y'all, and uh, uh, we will, Lord willing, we'll be back on here Sunday morning at, at 7 o'clock and in church at 11. We're trying to get the, uh, uh, we've been asked about the Bible study, we'll try to get them going back on Sunday, so uh, y'all be uh, remembering that. We've got a rest home service tomorrow night, first time we've got to go back in a long and in, in a while because of COVID shut down and then we were supposed to go two weeks ago and then all this stuff happened we didn't get to so uh we're looking forward to going down there and those people are really wanting to want us to be there so we're gonna go but uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody at facebook and uh see you uh, so long till next time yeah.